So in this video, we're going to find the shortest distance from the point P with coordinates x1, y1 to the line ax plus by plus c equals zero. Okay, so we're in a 2D situation and we've got a 3D formula. And we're going to see if we can adapt this into something nice uh, for two dimensions. Okay, so if we go through the stages that we went through in the previous video, the first thing I did was I converted P into a 3D coordinate, and I called it P prime, which has the coordinates x1, y1, and 0 for the z axis. So we're going to let P prime be that coordinate there. Okay, so the next thing that I did was think about this equation of the line and go, OK, well, I need a direction vector in some form. So I'm going to rearrange this to get y equals. So I'm going to subtract ax and c from both sides, divide through by b. So I'm going to get minus a over bx, take away c over b. OK, so we've now got the equation of the line here. We're going to choose a point on this line with 3D coordinates, so we're going to let the coordinate of A, so the point A, have coordinates 0, so I'm going to let X be 0. The consequence is that when X is 0, Y will be minus C over B. And because it's just on the XY grid, I'm going to put 0 as the Z component. Okay, so here's my point A. So, I can now work out P take away A. So P, lowercase p, is the position vector of P prime, and little a is the position vector of capital A. So I can say P to A, uh, sorry, A to P. Don't want P to A. Apologies. A to P prime. OK. Well, that will be P prime take away A. So x1 take away 0 is x1. We've got y1 take away minus c over b. So y1 plus c over b. And then we've got 0 take away 0 is 0. So this is a p prime. Right, next thing I'm going to need is the direction vector. So I've got that piece there. I now need d, the direction vector. So from the line... Because the gradient is minus a over b, that means every one along in the x direction, I am going minus a over b in the y direction. And 0, because we're not moving in the z direction. OK, so I now have my d. And while I'm here, I'm going to also find the length of d, because I'm going to need it anyway. I'm going to need that. So let's find the length of d. So that's going to be... Uh, 1 squared plus minus a over b squared, so plus a squared over b squared, square rooted. Okay, so that is the length of this vector here. Right, we're well on our way. So the next thing is, I need to work out this numerator. So d crossed with p take away a is our ap prime. OK, so I, J, K, and D is 1 minus A over B, 0, and uh, AP prime was X1, Y1 plus C over B, 0. So we're going to get 0I. Um, 0j, and then for k, we've got uh, 1 times y1 plus c over b, take away minus a over b times x1, so plus a over b x1, and that's with a k on the end. Right, so that means that the length h is the length of this vector here. Okay, so that's the square root of that squared plus that squared plus this squared. So 
what we'll get is the length um, of this component here. Now, what you need to be clear on is that when I find the length of this vector, I get a, um, a value that is greater than or equal to 0. Now, this by itself, if I just wrote y1 plus c over b plus a over bx1, thinking that that um, squaring and square rooting just knock each other out, the slight problem with that is that this could be negative. Okay, that could have been negative. That could have been altogether like minus 5k. But, uh, so uh, I need to recognise that I'm finding the positive of that. Okay, so that's why I'm going to put modular signs there uh, to take account of this. And that is divided by the length of d, which we worked out down here, was the square root of 1 plus a squared over b squared. So at the moment, this is looking OK. Um, can I make it look nicer? So the numerator, I'm just going to reorder that to write as a over b x1 plus y1 plus c over b. That seems like a reasonable thing to reorder. Now in the denominator, I don't like having this nested fraction here. OK, so what I'll do is I will first of all factor 1 over b squared out within the square root. So 1 over b squared times by, so I'm going to have to have b squared plus a squared here. Now let's just make sure that you're clear on that because that will expand out back to that. 1 over b squared times b squared is the 1. 1 over b squared times a squared is the a squared over b squared. Now we know that, um, well, let's just write down the numerator first. We know that we can split up this square root and say this is the square root of 1 over b squared times by the square root of b squared plus a squared. So the square root of 1 over b squared is, of course, just 1 over b. And uh, we've got the b squared plus a squared, which I'll write as a squared plus b squared. Uh, square rooted, of course, that's still square rooted. Like that. And now that I've got this 1 over b here, I can multiply top and bottom by b. Um, and the consequence is that I'm going to get ax1 in the numerator plus by1 plus c over the length of a squared plus b squared, so the square root of a squared plus b squared. And this is the formula uh, for finding the shortest distance from the point p with x1, y1, to the line ax plus by plus c equals 0. So the shortest distance in two dimensions. Now what's nice about that is that you've got the line in this form, ax plus by plus c. So substituting x1 and y1 straight into this, the magnitude of that divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And that is that shortest distance. So we can bring it down to this nice formula here.